Thank you. Thank you. Let, let me first of all thank all of you for all of the work you've done uh, in, in my campaign helping me. Um, uh, two weeks ago we had uh, uh, 500 people uh, on a uh, Saturday afternoon in Higginsville. Um, and uh, uh, Jason Kander came up to me and he said, something is not right. He said, here's the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. Uh, <laughs> Standing here, he said, have you looked at the audience out there? And, and, uh, um, but I, I think uh, we, we have been to every part of this district, Ulrich, uh, Richmond, Slater, uh, uh, Concordia, Odessa, uh, obviously, obviously Lexington, where Ike Skelton uh, lives, and, and Ike and, and Patty, his wife, have been very uh, helpful. Uh, we've been not one single sp spot in the 5th Congressional District have we not uh, visited and, and worked. And the reception uh, has, been, has been good and, and thank all of you who, uh, who've been very helpful. Uh, actually our county exec's uh, wife, a spouse, uh, Georgia chaired the event in Higginsville and of course Sherry and Jessica, Miriam. Uh, it's just been absolutely fabulous uh, everywhere we've gone. Uh, I was in Lawson, Missouri, I think I mentioned this to Claire, and some Republicans came to hear me speak uh, be because they said they, they, they couldn't believe that a member of Congress would come to Lawson. And so, uh, 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 and they came in and, and, and actually sat through the whole uh, evening. So it's been, it's been fabulous. Uh, and we, we are going to uh, have to uh, continue to work uh, I listened uh, uh, last night to uh, Bill O'Reilly say that uh, that you know that the voter turnout is going to be poor, and that we're going to blame uh, voter suppression. And, and uh, uh, the, the 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 reality is that as I'm talking to my colleagues from around the country, and, and we're having these these calls all day. I'm, I'm one of the national co-chairs for the Obama campaign. So we have the, the co-chairs and then we have the CBCs. So I'm getting a, a good picture and people are actually standing in line to vote absentee. So uh, I, I think that what, what, what people are saying may not be uh, factual. Uh, it doesn't matter, however. Uh, what we've got to do is make sure that we have the level of enthusiasm we need to turn out the maximum number of voters. Why? Because, ladies and gentlemen, on all of the issues, we are right. Whether it's Social Security or, or Medicare, uh, whether it is the, the whole issue of the uh, Bush tax cuts, whether it's uh, cyber security, uh, Social Security, uh, whether it is uh, whether or not we need to increase the minimum wage, on every single issue, we are right. We are right. That, it's just that simple. We are right. And we don't have to go up and make up stuff about Jeeps. Uh, going to Mexico and to Canada and into the Caribbean. We don't have to make up stuff. All we have to do is just talk about the issues because the people are with us. We are right on the issues. And, and because we are right, because the issues we are championing are right, it means that we have somebody in Washington in the United States Senate who goes up there with the right positions. She is right on the positions. She is as tough as they come. We need somebody in the Senate who we, who's not shifting with the sands. Claire McCaskill stands where she stands no matter what. Everybody in here, if you know Claire McCaskill, she stands where she stands. What she says is what she means. We've got to send her back to the Senate. Claire McCaskill is the best we can send to the U.S. Senate. Ladies and gentlemen, my friends, Claire McCaskill, our senator, we've got to send her back. She is absolutely great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, listen, I, um, first of all, I'm honored so many of you came out tonight. This was a last minute. As you all know, my schedule's been a little upside down for the last week and a half. And so we've had things planned, we had to cancel. And so we had this moment in the campaign uh, a few days ago when everyone says, well, what do we do now? And everybody in this room will understand 
what I thought about at that moment. Everybody knows what I thought about. I thought about what mom would do. And I know what mom would do. What mom would do is get out and talk to the people who make a difference that are the workers in elections. Uh, she believed very much in the power of an individual to get involved in the political process and make this world a better place. So I said, well, let's move around the state, but let's make sure that we do some stops. And even if we have a few dozen people, it doesn't matter. The people that will be there will be the people who understand that sometimes one hour of phone calls is the most patriotic thing you can do in the world. That one shift knocking on doors could actually be a bigger act for your country than anything else you could do. We said the Pledge of Allegiance. And that's very important, that we pledge allegiance to this country, this great nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That's very important. But the only way we get liberty and justice for all is if we do more than just pledge. We have to do more than pledge. And so that's why I'm here, because this room is full of people who understand the value of spending some time on the phone. Um, I can't tell you how many hours were spent at our kitchen table stuffing envelopes when I was a child. I can't tell you how many times I was tugging on my mom's shirt trying to get her off the phone when she was phone banking at home for a school board candidate or a city council candidate or maybe a state rep candidate. But this, this, it wasn't as if my mom was a big deal. And in her mind, you are way more important than anybody who's running because you're the ones that make this democracy work. And that's why I'm here tonight. I'm here to thank you and ask you over the next few days to do what my mom taught us to do a long, long time ago, and that is just to give a little of yourself between now and Tuesday. Now, I'm going to do something kind of mean, but I figure I have a right. I've had a rough two weeks. I'm going to ask everyone to think about Saturday and Sunday. Now, think in your mind what you're doing. Maybe you've got a birthday party for your kids. Maybe you've got some obligation to go to dinner Saturday night. Think about what you're doing on Saturday and Sunday. And I want you to think about 10 in the morning on Saturday, 1 in the afternoon on Saturday, and 4 in the afternoon on Saturday. And then I want you to think about 1 and 4 on Sunday. After church, Congressman, <laughs> after church, I'm not messing, I'm not messing with the church hours, 1 and 4. That's five different times, 10 one, four, one, and four. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to first start out with 10 o'clock on Saturday and I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if you'll commit to knocking on some doors at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning. Raise your hand. Okay, that's great. How about one o'clock on Saturday? That's terrific. How about four o'clock on Saturday? All right, all right, we got some twofers in the crowd. Now on Sunday, how about 1 o'clock on Sunday? Okay, we got some takers over here. And how about 4 o'clock on Sunday? That's terrific. Now what all you need to do now is show up either at Rock Hill, 63rd and Rock Hill, our office there. We have an office in Grandview. We have an office north of the river. If you need any help finding that office, you're in more trouble than I think you are. <laughs> um, it, all the offices are listed on ClaireMcCaskill.com. Or you can call the information for McCaskill for Senate, and they will get you to an office, and that office will direct you to a location. You know what they think on the other side? They don't think we have a ground game. <laughs> they think that this model of turnout, the reason you saw millions of dollars come into Missouri in the last 24 hours, is they actually believe that we aren't engaged in this election. They actually believe that our enthusiasm is going to be so low that if they pour a couple of million dollars in for Congressman Aiken at the 11th hour, that that'll be enough to win the day. Well, I got news for him. It isn't going to work. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. I'm really proud to call so many of you my dear friends. And so many of you have been my friends for so long. Some of you are brand new friends. But I want you to know I don't take any of this for granted. I don't take your support for granted. I don't take your time for granted. 
I am so honored to have my friends like Mike Sanders and the new Senator Lavota. By the way, you know, I'm the other side of that saying. There's only two ways to run a race, either unopposed or scared. <laughs> He's got the unopposed. <laughs> Lucky you know what. And so I'm taking over on the other part. And I'll run the only way I know how is if I'm 10 points behind. But the reason I can do that is you guys lift me up and you give me passion and you give me energy. And what I will do for the next six years, I will work as hard as I know how to make you proud. And I do know this, how you feel about your United States Senator and how they represent you matters. And you know in your heart the kind of Senator Todd Aiken would be. He will not be the kind of senator that when you turn on the TV at night, you think, you know, I'm proud of him. That's not the kind of senator he will be. He will be the kind of senator that is not willing to work across the aisle, not willing to forge those hard compromises, not willing to swim against the stream sometimes, not willing to fight for the middle class families that make this country the greatest on the planet. So with love in my heart, and with mom talking in my ear. Let's go out and get this done. Thank you guys.